Yes, you've seen this movie, and yes, you've seen its cast of dinosaurs, but did you ever wonder, instead of just having them on a screen, you could actually have them in your backyard? Well, you can if you know how to make an animatronic. Animatronics are usually seen in Broadway musicals such as Beetlejuice, usually because you have to bring a creature to life for a live audience. And they can also be used on small-scale TV shows such as Prehistoric Park, usually for the close-up shots. But the movie industry is undoubtedly where it makes its biggest impact. You have some great examples such as Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors, Bruce from Jaws, and of course, Jurassic Park with the T-Rex and Velociraptors. Now, I've made some dinosaur animatronics myself in the past, uh, but this time I'm going to fully automate one using electronics and servo motors, and the dinosaur in question I'm going to recreate is a Heterodontosaurus. Now this dinosaur is basically a primitive ornithischian dinosaur that lived around the early Jurassic of South Africa. It's so far back in time, so primitive, that we're not actually sure where it fits into any group of dinosaur. This model in particular is going to be about a meter long, about the same size as the usual sub-adult. And the first thing I needed was to create a scale drawing. Now I used this illustration of a skeleton uh, to create the drawing. But as you can see, it's standing upright, and the drawing I have is going to be crouching. As you can see, it's going to have blinking eyes and a moving jaw, but I'm going to uh, put away that craning neck and instead make that feature for the tail. And all systems will be activated when they sense a human within one centimeter of them, and this is going to be to 1.8 scale. So first, I'm going to start off with the head. This was the point where I first tried to follow the dimensions of my scale drawing exactly, not just for the skull but also for the orbit for the eyes to come in. Then also the lower jaw, same basic principle. And then afterwards I used some tracing paper to create the other side of the face. Here is where I'm creating a rubber hinge for the jaw using parts of an old rubber swimming cap. But as you will see later in this video, I'm gonna make some edits to this. And here is the part where I'm creating an eye mechanism as well as using styrofoam balls for eyes. Had to do a lot of jiggery pokery which you'll see right here. And in the end, I settled on a toothpick with a styrofoam ball spear through it so that it could rotate. And now here's the part where I'm finishing the entire head, which you'll see in a moment. And now here's the finished head. You can see the edits I've made to the rubber hinges. I've made them shorter because otherwise there was too much slack and the mouth couldn't actually close. And here's where I attached a wire loop to the lower jaw so that a string can be tied to it so that it will be able to pull the jaw up and down. So now here's the part where I'm creating the rest of the neck. Then there was the task of connecting the neck to the jaw. So for this part, I used liquid latex rubber for the first time in order to create a sheet that could be used as a hinge for the jaw whilst also connecting it to the neck. Also had to create another surface on the neck for this sheet to be connected to. And now here is the complete head with the full set of teeth. The teeth is what I want to talk about in particular. Heterodontosaurus translates to different toothed lizard, and you can see why because it has this set of teeth that is very reminiscent of humans. It has incisors at the front, used for snapping twigs and leaves. It has canines at the back of those incisors. We're not quite sure what they're for, maybe they were used for fighting or nipping the occasional bit of meat. 
And then there's the knobbly teeth at the back used for mashing insects. For the creation of the tail, at first I tried to follow the dimensions of my drawing just like with the head, but then I realized that the tail ended up being a bit too short, so I added an extension which you'll see later in this video. Also, I added bits of the rubber cap in order to create another rubber hinge for it to connect to the body. For the final result, you can see that I put two wire loops inside of the tail. This is so that two pieces of string can attach so that the tail will be able to move back and forth. Then for the body, instead of following the dimensions of my drawing, I just decided to make it so that it would fit both the head and the tail. The final result for the body ended up being quite large even for an animal that was sitting. And you'll notice that towards the end of the tail, the body starts to go in a coffin-like shape. And now here's the process of creating the arms and legs, which are crouching as per the drawing. If the body itself starts to look like a turkey with the arms and legs, then that means it's been done correctly. And here are the finished hands and feet as per the fossils. These are very characteristic of a primitive dinosaur because the hands in particular, instead of three fingers like later dinosaurs, they have five fingers, each with an imposable thumb. And now here's the complete body structure of the animal, complete with all three pieces put in place, and also with the extension of the tail. And now comes the automation process. This is an SG90 servo motor, and it's a motor that only moves in one direction like a hinge. For this process, I had to cut out a square-like hole in this dinosaur's head. This is the motor that's going to connect to the jaw. And you'll see here in the finished product that a string will be attached to the lower jaw and the motor via a string. The string I used is dental floss, and the servo motor will be able to move it up and down. So for this project, I used three servo motors and also one ultrasonic distance sensor with four ports so that they will be able to activate the circuit when they sense a human within one centimeter of them. A small breadboard in order to connect everything together using connecting wires. And also an Arduino Uno R3 plus the cable in order to give power to the circuit. Here's what the circuit design looks like. Take a screenshot if you have to right now. And here's what the circuit would look like when it comes to fruition. Taking a look at these servo motors, one of them will have two propeller-like blades. This is the one that's going to be used for the tail. And the other two will have only one arm each. These are the ones for the eyes and the mouth. And here's the code that will be used on Arduino later. Take a screenshot right now if you have to. So now here's the part where I'm attaching the tail, in which I tie the two bits of string that you saw earlier in this video onto the propeller on the motor. And also I stapled the rubber end of the tail to the back, but then I realized that one of the ends of the rubber end had to have more slack so that the tail could actually bend. The part where I was attaching the head seemed pretty straightforward at first, but that's when I realized I forgot to add an eye mechanism. So there's where the problem started because I couldn't attach the servo motor in a way it wouldn't block the other servo motor already controlling the mouth and I found that when you put the glue gun to the eyes they started to melt. So I decided to remove this servo motor completely, it didn't affect my circuit in any way. If you do find however you're in this same situation and you have an extra servo motor, you can use it for another function. There is a lot of evidence that some dinosaurs had wattles, not too dissimilar to that of chickens. The biggest revelation for this came from the fact that just five years ago we thought we had a definitive picture of what the stuck-billed dinosaur at Montosaurus looked like until a new mummified specimen was discovered. It clearly showed the signs of a fleshy crest, just like that of a cockerel. So if you want, you can use this extra servo motor for a swinging wattle, but in the end I decided just to remove that extra servo motor. So now here's a bit of a sneak peek of the full body animatronic only without all of the skin and covering. And you can see here where I put the port in order for it to connect to the computer. Once you connect it to the computer, both of the servo motors inside of there will react and start to spin around. 
and you'll see right here all of these servo motors in action let's take a close look at the jaw right here you see uh, the servo motor only goes one way just like a hinge so the jaw goes up and down and the tail goes from left to right I've left out the part where I'm detailing the rest of the skin covering the body, but basically it's just a bunch of rounded scales covering the body all over, all made out of paper clay. For painting, I decided to make the animatronic a conservative chocolate color. Uh, this is probably going to help it blend in with the backgrounds. And for the paint, I actually mixed it with craft glue in order to make it waterproof and smooth. In case you're wondering about the other colors, the mouth is an indigo color. The teeth are yellowish white, and the beak and claws are grey. The feathers on the dinosaur will be based on this very closely related animal called Tian Yu Long. It's a type of heterodontosaur that was found in China, and it was the first of its kind to have been found with direct evidence of feathers, specifically a downy covering, as well as quills. Now I've left out the process in which I'm putting the feathers onto this model, but I'll cut to the chase. The downy covering is made out of grass powder dipped in black paint and craft glue and the quills are basically just sewable wire that are attached using hot glue. Unfortunately that makes this model a lot less kid friendly. And here is the completed animatronic. This took me almost half a year to complete but I think it was worth it. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for similar videos just like this. To watch some more of my animatronic dinosaurs in action. Click the video on the top right corner. To watch some of my piano videos, click the video on the bottom right corner. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.